Hello and welcome to another episode of Movies That Make Us. I'm Jake. I'm Tracy. And I'm Val. And we are full-blown in spooky season, halloween time. I don't think that's right, but we're going to go with it. As I like Halloween. Know, yeah, you like halloween As you can tell from Val and Tracy, who have dressed up a little bit today, that is awesome. <laughs> right, right before, Val pointed out that she had the feathers on, and I love, I love it, the skull and crossbones. And Tracy said, oh, hold on, I'll be right back. I, I, and have- I, was, a little, I was a little nervous. This this going? only took like 10 seconds to get, too. Yeah. And when you came back, I thought, I'm not disappointed at all. I love it. Yeah, I'm just looking around my room, and I have so many things I could put on right now, because I'm in the fun room of things. <laughs> you got the but, Boba Fett helmet right there. Well, that's, you can't actually put that on, but hold on. You guys talk amongst yourselves Ooh. really quick. Ooh. All right. I'm excited. Well, yeah, this should be good. Do you, uh, how, how does Halloween rank on your list of uh, holidays, Jake? Is it up there? Uh, it is. Yeah, I enjoy Halloween quite a bit. And I think what I love about Halloween is there are different ways that you can enjoy it, right? There's a lot of yeah. people that are into like the slasher movies, haunted house, blood and gore part of it. And then there's other people that that aren't into that as much, but you can enjoy it however you like. And I, I do. I like wa- helping my kids dress up. I like doing the trick or treating, which I'm hoping <laughs> A little bit of that this year, if it's not as much as we've done in years past. <gasps> yes. <laughs> there you go. I love it. It matches my shirt. See? I'm, I'm a Glorian shirt it's on. Not, it's not finished. It needs to be painted. That and- is cool, though. Oh. You could do it. You could just do it all white like that, and then you'd do be the like white, a do the prototype have- Funko Pop Mandalorian that they've well, So I have there. the white limited edition Mando. Yeah character uh-huh. but i still need to put like the yeah everything inside it, you know but. if only you knew an artist that could help you paint that i mean i can paint this this isn't hard <laughs> i can't make it luckily a friend made it for me nice. <laughs> painting it's all yeah i was I just trying to give dave some props but you know that's okay yeah <laughs> yeah but it, yeah so i like halloween it's it's up there Probably, you know, for me, it probably goes Christmas, Thanksgiving. Like we're going into the type of mm-hmm. time of year that I really enjoy. It goes pretty quick from here to Thanksgiving's the end. Thanksgiving's my favorite. Eat yeah. all the things. Put the stretchy <laughs> pants on. Yeah, it's hard for me because that's the other 364 days of the year for me too, and I probably need to change my life <laughs> so that it's a little bit more special. <laughs> but stretchy pants. We talked about natural. I feel like that's the day, though, that you don't have to feel guilty about it because it's expected of you. Yeah, that's true. Like, oh, you don't you need some more to eat? Did you get enough? We have more, more. and you're like, okay. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to be rude. It is Thanksgiving after all. I better have that. I better have that fourth pumpkin pie. (laughs) (laughs) Not spice, just the whole pie. Just the Costco one. Oh man. Yeah, the Costco one's pretty good. It's a, and it's huge, so it's a good size pie. Anyway. It went up by a dollar this year, just to let you know. It's now six ninety nine instead of five ninety nine for the ginormous pie. <laughs> worth it, still worth it. A lot of stuff has gone up this year. A lot yeah. of stuff. So, unfortunately, but we are excited because we have a fun um halloween event that's coming up hopefully we can make this like a yearly thing i just threw that out there without asking these two people um but we are going to be raising money for tracy because tracy is raising money for the american cancer association and you're going to be running right yes uh, in january i'm going to be a complete idiot and try and complete the dopey um challenge out at walt disney world which is a 5k uh thursday morning a 10k friday morning a half marathon saturday morning and a full marathon on sunday morning um raising money for american cancer society such a dear um thing for me my wife had breast cancer um her mom passed of cancer her several aunts passed of cancer her grandma passed of cancer I just found out that one of my family members uh, has blood cancer. So, 
you know, it affects everybody. And to be able to raise money for a group like that really helps make these training miles easier. Um, like I did 15 last weekend and I'm got 17 coming up next weekend and those runs are not fun or easy. And so to be able to be like, okay, we're raising money for ACS. This is okay. This is good, but no, we're going to have a really cool Halloween party out of the midway. Um, our good friend Bill is helping us host it. We're going to have karaoke and trivia and drink and food specials and raffle prizes and all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, so that's going to be on October 29th. Um, trivia is from 7 to 8, and then karaoke, dancing, and costumes and stuff from 8 until midnight. Um, I am going to stay up late that night, so it's, it's going to be rare, crazy rare a Friday night that I'm not in bed by 8.30, 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jake, we didn't tell no, you I this, know. but we're all dressing up as 80s style runners, so find your shorty yep. shorts. No. <laughs> Oh. Jake's like, I'm sorry, I'm busy that night. <laughs> so I have a pair of running shorts that are short, but Sweat I just hands. found on Amazon these um like 80s splatter paint biker shorts to go under. Nice. The- and I'm gonna wear a bright nice. colored tank top and my head sweatband and my knee-high socks. That so um Adam's family, the movie just sent me a whole Adam's family package and there's like knee high socks in there. And I thought those will be perfect uh, because it's Halloween time. Perfect. Yeah. yeah uh, I'll, I'll have to see number one, if they make eighties runner shorts in my size. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll put something it's not, you can dress as our coach. That's right. I'll do a track suit. Yes. I <laughs> am. Every, you can be but every runner is hoping to show up and see as their coach is me for sure. <laughs> Right, get out there and oh, run. Just, just Have you ever run? Inspiring, and yeah, that's, that's what true. you are, that's Jake. Right. That's I'm right. You're inspiring, dude. Rick Majerus was one of the greatest basketball coaches. Oh my gosh, the Rick Majerus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of of all the people I aspire to be in my life, Rick Majerus, another one with a bullet. Oh my gosh, that will sweater you is iconic. Get a bullet? I'll see what I can. I oh, I will do like a win. Yes. Dude, okay. Of course, I, all of you was, can wear whatever you want when you come. <laughs> we're gonna have costume contests. Everyone that comes to the door will get one raffle ticket as you enter. It's free to get in. We just hope that once you get there, you will order some of the specials. You will donate. You'll buy some raffle tickets. We already have some really, really great prizes. Um, I've yeah. gotten a bunch of um, things from the movie studios. Like I just got sent. I wish I had it. It's upstairs. Um, this the bloom the whole mm-hmm. house. yeah we got the amazon bloom house, house um, amazon package mm-hmm. that i'm not opening i'm specifically leaving it pristine so we can give it away um i, I know a, that we're going to have some donations K. from what did you say tracy i've got an avengers 4k disc set that will be given away wow uh, and uh, yeah but i'll, no, I'll go be ahead. you were you were saying no, I was going to say um, the Midway is also going to be pulling some prizes that um, they have been putting in some donation money for the costume contest. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be great. I do want to point out, Tracy, you said you were being a complete idiot by running this. I want to point out you're being a complete idiot again because this will be the second year in a <laughs> row that you're doing the Doki Challenge. <laughs> yes, but this time I have a clock. <laughs> last time it yeah, was virtual. You did have a clock last time. I- Dude, but I, when I did the marathon, this was the best marathon ever because halfway through, I went to, I stopped, I got on a on a little bus, we went to Disney Springs, I had a barbecue lunch, it was great. Yeah. That's how, <laughs> that's how I like to run five Ks, to be honest. Right. Yeah, stop the way, barbecue, a barbecue lunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe throw a dinner break somewhere in there too. This uh, one I actually have to like complete within a time limit. So yeah. It, I think it's amazing. Um, we've we've seen you as you've grown in this running journey because um, a lot of it's been since we've been doing the show. I know you started yeah. before we started the show, but a lot of like I remember when you when we first started recording, you would always tell us you were half crazy because you would only do half marathons, <laughs> and now you're doing the dopey challenge, and it's just amazing to see how much you've grown as a runner and and how much you've done. It's pretty cool. Well, thank you, man. The first time I heard about the dopey challenge, I'm like, nope. There's no way, never. And 
then here we are. Yeah. So he wanted yeah. to do a dopey drink special at the bar, but I said it sounded too much like something Bill Cosby would give us, so I I vetoed it. Yeah, that's a good call. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that, and as soon as she said it, I'm like, makes perfect sense. No. <laughs> as so a woman, doing... I don't really want to put that out there. It starts with dope. <laughs> we're, we're doing this. We want everyone to come and have fun and feel safe. Yes. And comfortable. The, the Midway is a very safe place run by good yeah. people. Our friend Megan uh, is one of the bartenders out there and, and servers. Um, but yeah, we're going to do a, a Jack Skellington, Jack and Coke special or Jack and something special, uh, a beer run, a chicken run. So it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, if you guys want details. We will have more of those coming. We will make sure to post them on our Facebook page as well as Instagram and Twitter. So make sure you're following us in all the places so you can get all the details. And we and can actually see you calls. in person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So um, super exciting stuff. And this month we're talking about some classic monster movies. Yes. We still go all in on Halloween this month. Well, kind of with classic monster movies maybe next year we'll do slashers because i know tracy's a big no i i'm not a big not slasher. slasher you're a horror fa fan i apologize I, it, I like i don't like the gore i don't yeah. i don't like gore um i like more of the supernatural the suspense yeah. the yeah maybe we should go all supernatural next next year oh that'd not, be fun. not the tv show no but, yeah thank no. you no I, this is my favorite thing. If you really want to see Tracy shut down a conversation quick, just start talking about the Supernatural TV show. And when you meet his wife and you're thinking, okay, yep, nope. This, <laughs> he gets it a lot at home, so he's just done. Yep. <laughs> yep. I gotta say, though, it was fun going back and looking at some of these old monster movies. Yeah, it was super it fun. It was really cool. Yeah, and they're ones that I think, uh, I mean, they're not a huge time commitment. I think. Yeah. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon was like an hour and 20 minutes or something like mm -hmm. that. And Dracula was only an hour and 14. I mean, they didn't yeah. make long three hour movies right back in the day. And so uh, it, it was really cool to see. And suspense and horror was a totally different thing back then because you didn't rely on a lot of the visuals. I mean, there were some great visual things in, in these movies, but they didn't have the special effects and the visuals right. that we have now. And so you had to rely on the story and find different ways to build that suspense. And we'll talk about how, how they did that. But we're starting with Creature from the Black Lagoon, which I, be honest, I, I've heard of it. I remember reading about it when I, when I was a kid in our school library. We had these like picture books that were the classic Universal monster oh, movies. Cool. Get, and they just had pictures from the films and talked about the, the movies. And I remember reading the one about Creature from the Black Lagoon. But I think this was the first time that I've actually sat down and watched it. And it was pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Jake. I had I had seen the creature. I kind of knew the story, but I had never sat down and watched the whole thing. I'd seen clips, but I'd never watched the full movie. And it's surprisingly well done. Yeah. Yeah, we had to watch this um, in my uh, makeup special effects class at USC. Ooh, nice. Um, and I have to say, I mean, I haven't seen it since then. That's right. <laughs> like a little over 20 years. Um, and as I'm watching it, I'm thinking, like, this is where Steven Spielberg took a lot of his Jaws moments. I was thinking there's that a lot too. of very similar camera work mm -hmm. um, because I hadn't really seen Jaws when I was at film school, like my parents weren't really into showing us that type of film. And so I saw Jaws way later on. And then last year during the pandemic, I went back and saw Jaws in the theater. Nice. Um, and in a lot of the, the shots when you have the creature down below and he first spots um, mm -hmm. the woman, like a lot of those shots are very similar to the underwater shots in the original Jaws movie, which I thought was really neat. This is also like the major like damsel in distress era oh, yeah. of movies. Yes, it and there, I just, I'm laughing my head and it's totally <laughs> perfect for the time. I'm not like, like right. ragging on it or anything and pulling some like feminist agenda. But, um, but I think it's, it's so telling of the time because there's so many moments um, and these actresses that are in these movies are like become more famous later. So it's really yes. cool seeing them in these like, you know, low budget uh, monster movies um, 
But there's a moment that I just couldn't stop laughing at when the monster like kills the guy on the beach and <laughs> she like goes behind the tree and then she just falls over. <laughs> she kind she of jumps. Like, ah! And then yeah. she like she doesn't even try to run or push or anything. She just falls over and then he picks her up and then but he's been out of the water too long so you know then he falls to the ground but I, was just like, <coughs> I, I, thought, I thought of the classic um a christmas story movie where randy like falls down in the snow with his brother and he's like randy lay there like a slug it was his only defense and that was kind of the same thing that she did it was the only thing she could do just fall to the ground and and what's interesting about that is you're you're right this is totally damsel in distress era mm -hmm. and she totally is that but she's also so, kind of surprisingly progressive as far as women go for the yeah. 1950s where oh yeah you know, she's, she's trying to talk about how tough she is and she's going on the uh excursion with them and even when she's talking to her boyfriend and the one guy's like when are you two kids gonna get married and they're like oh why do we need to get married and i thought man for the 50s that's yeah. pretty yeah, it's pretty uh, yeah. out there. So, although, although there were a couple of moments to offset that progressiveness, is when they yeah. uh, when they show up at the camp, and the 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 two guys have been attacked by the creature from the Black Lagoon, and they they know that something's wrong, but they're not sure. And the one guy says, "You need to stay back," you know, and like all the guys yeah. go look at what happened, but the woman has to stay back, and you know, well, because she's just but... gonna fall over. She's gonna right. have no help at all. She'll be in the way. Like, like she's just gonna fall over and they're gonna have to step over her or drag her body away like she's gonna I mean, be no help you feel you feel bad for her in the moment but then later in the film when you hear just fall over you're like okay it makes sense they knew what was gonna happen she was just gonna be in the way <laughs> well, it, it's true i mean they do they do put her in a refrigerator a lot in this film and it's it's pretty clear yeah. that that's that's the type of storytelling and it is a product of its time and you just mm -hmm. have to know that when you watch it well, um, I think it adds to the drama of that time as well because these but movies. I, I love and if you watch, my favorite thing, and I hope that Jake, we can post some of these on um, our page throughout the month. Is the trailers that go along with these movies are my favorite. Like yeah. from the music oh, to yeah. how they're describing oh, what's yeah. happening. Like this back then was like super scary um, to people, and they, sh you know, like the monsters always walking super slow. Like you could outrun, I could outrun this guy, yeah. right? But he's so slow. But it's the music <laughs> that goes with it. And again, going back to Jaws, when she dives into the water, um, and this boat that looks like it just yeah. lives there. That boat doesn't look like it's moved for like ages. That is the oldest boat in the world. Right. Um, right. he dives into the water and she's, you know, doing her thing, which reminded me exactly why I hate just lingering in Lake Powell in the middle of the lake when I, <laughs> when I go there, because I don't know what's under there that's going to touch my feet. Um, yeah. you know, you've got the music of him following along with her uh -huh. and the music in these movies are the most fun because that's really how they told a lot of the story that in the right. angles, the right. camera angles, are really neat because they are in black and white. So there's a lot of shadow. There's a lot of, you know, cheating with things. Um, mm -hmm. it, they really had to get creative with the filmmaking on making you feel um, that suspense. Um, but it's also like the music is also just so corny, but back then it wasn't because they didn't right. have anything to like compare it to. So it was, right. just, it was a lot of fun watching these. Yeah. And I, and I think that's a good point because you do kind of have to put yourself in the position of what was it like to, right. I, I think about it. What was it like to watch this movie back yeah. then when there wasn't a lot of what we have now? And it was probably pretty terrifying. I would imagine the way that they did things and, and the way that they portrayed the creature. And I will say, you mentioned Jaws. I think the creature was less disappointing than the shark in Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and they probably didn't go over budget with him. I think the the things that were probably the most expensive about this movie was like the actual underwater diving equipment yeah, that right. they got for Which, the two divers was probably the most expensive thing they had to pay for. On and I, I was going to say at the time, I got to imagine there was not a whole lot of underwater movies. So right. that's got to be super exciting for the audience to be watching. Yeah. And all of those pulls were on, um, well, most of them I'm assuming, I know that like the blob and this one were on, uh, most of the underwater scenes were on the back lot of Universal. Yeah. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. um, they have a huge Florida. pool that they've used throughout the years, um, and they've just made it bigger and bigger for a lot of movies. Um, they used it later in the Truman Show and stuff like they've had. It's just it's really cool if you ever get to do like the Universal. The, what's the George problem. Clooney? The Perfect Storm. They filmed yeah. it too. Yeah, yeah. So um, a lot of what they did in these movies just made it easier for the movies that came after it. And it's shooting water and shooting in water oh. is not easy. And they Film. did not have the equipment that we have Film now. So water. it's very impressive. Yeah. Film is hard enough with a with a camera, and then you've got to make that camera waterproof, and then it's got to have focus. And it's I mean, there's so many technical difficulties of filming at the time that is just incredible yeah I, those cameras were heavy it's well, not like yeah. they had a little gopro no it, <laughs> no <laughs> you see that in the scene where he decides to go in the water and take the camera with him to try to get a picture of him i'm like that is probably similar in size and weight to the cameras <laughs> that they're using to film all of this yeah. and it's just amazing that they got what they did because it the underwater scenes hold up pretty well i mean they're they're pretty mm-hmm. impressive yeah, for and sure. I can't imagine that suit was comfortable to swim in. No, it's it's not. I did the, a little research on it, and it was actually created by a Disney Imagineer. Um, but they said it was so uncomfortable for the actor to wear because he couldn't sit. Mm-hmm. Um, he just kind of had to lean, and he or just fall over, or just like fall her. over. <laughs> <laughs> but he overheated a lot in California and in Florida where they filmed it, so they were like constantly dumping water over his head in order to try and keep him because it took so long to get into the suit. It was easier just to keep him cool by dumping stuff on him. I'm like, that's gotta be miserable. (laughs) And And there's a couple of scenes where you can tell it's just miserable. Like when he is carrying the girl, right. He look and he's just like, she's just like flopped over and he's just kind of dragging her in. And I'm like, that is what my teenage son looks like when we ask him to bring groceries in from the car. (laughs) and I imagine that's how we felt is like a teenage boy being asked to help with groceries. Just, uh, fine. <laughs> and it was just really awkward. It wasn't the normal, like, you know, he's got her cradle in his arms, kind of a th- it, like he's holding her and like barely hanging on. And she's just anyway, he's doing the thing that they all do like in King Kong, like, you yeah, know, like, she's just I don't, like, I've seen it. Like, I feel like it was okay. Every, all girls, damsels in the stress during this time that are carried, you do yeah. exactly what they did in King Kong. Well, and, and speaking of him carrying her, when, when he's carrying her through the grotto, he could not see very well in that suit, as you can oh, imagine. Sure. And so he scraped her head against one of the walls no. in the grotto while, while they were filming. I'm like, mm, yeah, that's not going to be good. Not surprising. <laughs> it is surprising you couldn't see very well because the eyes on that costume are huge, but I'm guessing you can actually <laughs> see through the eyes. Okay, now hear me out. If okay. you look at the face, and I wish I would have um, oh, no. like gotten a picture of the face of this monster, it looks a little bit like Chewy in this area, the okay. eyes, and uh-huh. then it looks a little bit like, um, who's the fish guy from Star Wars? Oh, Akbar. Admiral Akbar, Akbar, it looks Akbar. like if Chewy and Akbar had a baby and then <laughs> shaved it. Yeah, a baby who's constantly surprised because every scene that they show the boss, he's like, like, uh, you, yeah, I'm always surprised. <laughs> but, and, and I, it's so hard because I don't, if this movie were made today and it looked exactly like this, I think there'd be a lot to be made fun of there. But I think for what they did in the time, I think it's really impressive. Yeah. But it did look really, yeah. Now I'm never going to unsee it. If you were a woman back then, <laughs> like there was so many like half naked men in this movie. Like those oh, yeah. shorts with all mm-hmm. of their naked skin running around everywhere. I was like, wow, there's and all they're tell- all they're doing most of the movie is here's your swim trunks, really short swim trunks. Let's lotion you up and you guys run around set. <laughs> Yeah. And I love I, how at the beginning of the movie, too, when they all come out um, into the jungle, they've got their shirts unbuttoned almost to their navel. They're like Simon Cowell. You know, it's just like, oh, wow. OK, yeah. you're out in this mosquito infested jungle and you're. <laughs> it's, it's true. The movie's obviously a thirst trap for sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it it's. I, I kept thinking, did they not have wetsuits back in the fifties? Is that? Is that <laughs> I mean, they did, but that's not what makes the money, Jake. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know, 
I know. Yep. But uh, yeah, it it was a lot of fun though to to go back and revisit this movie, um, and watch it and experience it and wonder what it was really like to watch it in the theaters. And and honestly, the story's not bad. You know, I think if right. they remade it with the same story and a similar, I mean, they would have to update it. The woman they'd have to update well, quite a bit. They kind of did with um, Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of Water. Sure. That was- that's his homage to the creature from the black lagoon. Um, it's not the same story, obviously, because it's a captured fish creature in the, in the tank, but it is kind of the beauty and the beast kind of thing. Um, but that was kind of his homage to, because he grew up on these, on these movies. Yeah. I do love though, how predictable these movies are. Like when they capture them and they put them in the bamboo jail cell, (laughs) which I thought, well, number one guys, I mean, I know that's all you had, but you know you just see out. his <laughs> eyes below. Just yeah, there. just staring at him like, oh, he's getting out. And of course, <laughs> the guy who's supposed to watch him is like, well, I guess it's time for a nap. That's <laughs> what I'm doing. If there's a monster sitting right next to me, is well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and take a nap because it's been a long day. I'm a just monster that's just staring at you. Who's yeah, already, who's already shown he can slash his way through a heavy net? You know, so, right. yeah, bamboo poles are going to hold him. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and. <laughs> lean back it i mean i would be terrified to the point where it's like i'm not taking my eyes off you man i've got my harpoon ready to go like just in case you even move funny but no not this guy ah, all right i'll just lean back take a nap oh, fine. yeah and i and i think it's funny because now we kind of look at those things as cliche but at the time they really weren't and so we have to kind of take that into consideration too because we've seen it a bunch of times now whereas back then they hadn't hadn't as much I guess, but I still think that even if I was sitting in the theater seat oh, the first time, I'd be thinking, dude, don't fall asleep. What is wrong with you? Why would you? <laughs> I still do that now when I watch like yeah. suspense movies. I'm like, yeah. why are you running up the stairs? Why are you not running out the front door? Okay. I, I'm not a big fan of the Geico commercials, but the Geico Halloween where they're trying to escape from the 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 uh, chainsaw guy mm-hmm. cracks me up every time because they're like, we could go to that car that's running and just get out of here. And they're like, no, that's a stupid idea. Let's go into the basement. <laughs> yeah. Let's go into the shed with all of the all yeah. the us. Yeah. <laughs> that is how horror movies work a lot of times. <laughs> they make the worst possible decision and then are surprised when they die. No. Uh, but but this was fun. It was I was really glad that um this was a suggestion from you, Tracy, to start with this one or to watch this one. And I think it was a great suggestion to go and take a look at it and i think that people should check it out again it's it's free on peacock and it's easy, i think i mean i i don't even think you have to have a paid subscription nope. i watched the the ad version it's a little yeah. odd to go from black and white creature film to all of a sudden seeing 80 bryant dancing for gap but you know it's yeah okay. i'm a dancer now <laughs> <laughs> that commercial, I her, but that ad i see so much it's like it oh. is it's on every streaming service, whether you've got Hulu with ads or Peacock with ads. And yeah, it's I watched so it on fun. YouTube and it was every time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I get it. And I think it's great. I am. I it's applaud Old Navy for saying mm-hmm. we're going to have all body types available in our stores. And that's fantastic. There needs to be more stores that do that. And I think it's great that she's a dancer now, but it is on so much that I'm like, I can't. So much. I can't take yeah, it. It was a little weird to have the creature, you know, trying to pick up the woman and then cutting to that and yeah, in full color and every, you know, and then going back to it. But yeah, it's, it's free true. on Peacock. There's um, if you there's have Apple um, Plus TV, it's also on Apple. Nice. Oh, it's, dang it! I should have watched. Did it have ads on Apple? Because I would have. I don't know. I didn't watch it on Apple. I just I have the app that you can okay. put in movies and I'll tell you where it it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it said it was on Apple plus. So, so, um, but yeah, with the ads, it was definitely it's, <laughs> there's no good place in most to put an ad. I, and I, and I thought, man, it's been a long time since I've sat and watched a movie like on TV. Cause I, it, that used to happen yeah. all the time. You'd have the su- Saturday morning movie that was after the cartoons were over and you'd sit and you'd watch and um, there would be ads in that. And I think we just got used to it, but now it just felt really weird. It's very jarring when it's like, <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? And then ad pops up and you're like, oh my gosh, what, <laughs> what should we do? Well, we'll, we'll find out in 90 seconds because it's got <laughs> <laughs> But first, a message from our sponsor. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that part was definitely weird. I did think you mentioned the really old boat and there were scenes when they're in the lagoon where mm -hmm. they would show the boat. And I thought that boat, when they move on it, when they walk on it, it is very still. Yes, it yes. doesn't move at all. And it, it, for me, it almost ruined a lot of the illusion because I was like, boats move when they're on water. Even when they're parked, <laughs> they move. And I kind of feel like that boat was way too big for the lagoon. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's yeah. scraping the bottom. That's why it's not moving. Like, that's <laughs> not the kind of boat that you take in a marshy area, right? I mean, I'm not an expert, but You're not a just expert. using context clues... <laughs> On what I think a marsh would be and where I think that boat should be. Yeah. Did did either of you guys think of like, did they film this on the back of the rivers of America at Disneyland? Because at times it kind of <laughs> looked like that. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely did. Um, yeah, it yeah, there were there were little things like that where you're just like, that just doesn't work for me. But Mm -hmm. yeah. but it was fun it was just it was a lot fun. of fun really to was. watch and i want to know like when you were at like the casting for the women and it's like okay scream ah! like ah! you know and there's just like dun, dun. it's all like in the trailers they have all the screaming women yeah so, like just it's so much fun but it was like you have to act like you have to not only be able to scream and project right. but you have to also like have some kind of like thing mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you should have been like a 1950s scream you know, queen. Val, you got this down. I can't see Val as a helpless damsel in distress. I can't either, but she's got yeah. it down. Uh, <laughs> I'm a good mimicker. <laughs> there you go. And it's true. In a lot of the movies, you do have that that screaming and whatnot. And I and I feel like that became very normal and almost cliche mm -hmm. in the monster movies mm -hmm. but i feel like in the next one that we're going to talk about for next week dracula you didn't get that as much right i mean it's still there but it's i don't know not it was very different and uh but this i still enjoyed this quite a bit and i i do i mean when they're in the lab and they're talking about the hand thing and he's like well, you know, fish like this one over here. And he'd walk over and conveniently there was a lung fish. And then he'd walk over and there was another fish. And like, well, that's just convenient that they have a giant aquarium in this lab where you can point to all these different fish. <laughs> Did anybody else feel bad for Mark? I felt bad for Mark because all uh, he wanted was to help capture the creature. He didn't want to kill the creature. And then he gets killed by the creature. Spoiler alert. But I feel bad for the poor guy. Um, I kind of, I don't know. I don't know if you're supposed to feel bad for Mark or not. <laughs> um, because I think, well, first of all, there's a whole little love triangle going on between yep. Mark and the girl Weird. and her boyfriend. Yeah. And I really think Mike and her boyfriend liked each other more than they liked her. <laughs> but it was the fifties. They couldn't do that. Yeah, they could. That was, that was part of why they were always fighting was that sexual tension that was. Well, and I like that because that time period, I'm sure there was a lot of guys that were in the oh, theater yeah. thinking, okay, this is, this is something there. They have mm -hmm. their shirts off. Let's mm -hmm. not just a thirst trap for the women. But I yeah. felt like there was something like some hidden things yeah. going on with that triangle. I feel mm -hmm. like that triangles from daybreak. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they, they all love each other. Yep. <laughs> not judging whatever nope. you need to do for nope, you. Absolutely I'm not. perfectly okay with it. As long yeah. as you don't hurt others. Yep. Yeah. But there, there was some jealousy. There was some yeah. intense jealousy going on in that, uh, in that triangle. Yeah. Well, and, and I know Mark at first wanted to capture it. But I feel like the only reason he wanted to capture it was because he knew it would make more money alive than it would dead. And I think his order of priority was capture the creature to make lots of money, kill the creature and bring it back to make lots of money, let the creature live in peace and leave the, the lagoon. And and then the scientist guy, his was opposite. Like, we need to just leave the creature alone. We don't we're not equipped to do anything except, you know, let's take some pictures of him. Uh, <laughs> And then I love the scene too, where where uh, the the woman dives off the boat, and she's like twenty five feet away, and they're like, "She's gone too far. Pull up the anchor. We gotta go get her." <laughs> well, they were when worried. in the previous scene, she swims very far away, and then she does some kind of synchronized swimming 
like underwater uh-huh. because like that's what we do when we're in a lagoon. <laughs> that's how women swam in the 50s. Yeah. It was the dance. I've seen uh, the Bubsy uh, Berkeley musicals. Come on. Yeah. It, well, it, it is funny, but they knew that if she was out there too far and saw something, she was just going to faint in the water and probably. <laughs> So they had to get there quick so that that didn't happen. Um, yeah. And, and Mark, my favorite thing is the harpoon gun. Okay. <laughs> Talk about how ar- accurate it is and how powerful it is. And then when they're in the water, he shoots the creature and I'm thinking, yeah, if you had missed from that five feet, you were away from the creature with that harpoon gun. Cause he waits and waits and gets closer and closer and closer. So he can get the shot that he wants. Right. Thinking if that thing's as accurate and as powerful as you said it was, you should be able to go a little bit further back, get your distance a little bit. So, yeah. Maybe it's not as accurate underwater. There's drag, there's different physics, you know. Yeah. Well, then don't talk it up so much. <laughs> like, I did like how they, they shoot the creature with the, with the spear gun. It goes down into the grotto. And then when it comes back, it's missing the the arrow. There's no wound. I'm like, all right, right. creature heals fast. This is okay. Well, there was when he get gets on the boat, there was still a wound because he left his blood behind. That's true. But you That's just true. couldn't tell it was blood it because is, they it just is. it was not coming out of him. <laughs> right. it was left behind. I thought it was water until they're like, look at this, and I'm like, oh, it must be blood. Now, I'm like, <laughs> not especially when it's black and white, you can't tell yeah. between a puddle of blood and a puddle of water. It, it's hard, and I get it. <laughs> so I've got to give you the context clues so you knew. But yeah. Yeah. It was it but overall, and then the I love to when they're doing the the herb stuff that they put in the water that's supposed to paralyze him. And they're like, well, maybe if we had this in pellets and we could drop it lower. And they <laughs> they've just got a bag full of these pellets. Like, how did they put it together in that so quickly? They just gently row out too. They're, yeah. they're in the little rowboat and just dropping it into the water. I'm like, how is that gonna go deeper? But yeah. Also, okay. flakes go deeper than pellets. If you've ever fed a fish, yeah, the pellets float on top of the water, and the flakes go under the water. Yeah, this is goldfish science one hundred and one. Cool. <laughs> and they had goldfish in the fifties, so I know they knew how to do this kind of stuff. That guy had an entire tank full of a variety of fish, so he, he obviously knew how to feed fish. Them. Yeah. Which apparently can breathe on land and on water. I didn't know that. I don't know if that's true. I have to look it up. But still, but I, I think it's funny um, doing a little research on this. The the guy who is the producer played Thompson, the reporter in Citizen Kane. Oh wow! And he was told the story of a Mexican folklore story about a creature that would live in the water. And so he wrote it, and then it was like ten years later. Then they revised it. And came up with the screenplay for this, but he had been sitting on this idea for like ten or twelve years before they actually went into production. Yeah, and and what's been great is this is really kind of this movie I think really popular popularized that creature because we've seen it pop up. You mm-hmm. mentioned uh, Guillermo del Toro's film, and then we also had Hellboy, where uh, yeah, got a- sapien. A- sapien, who was basically well, what's creature. that TV show that used to be on with the green monster that kind of looked like him. But it was really cheesy. It was like back in the. I met the two main characters. I can't think of what it is. The Lee Stacks. The yeah, Land he looks ag- almost exactly like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so it's a it's a creature, and and you even get a creature I think similar in Hotel Transylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Throw all the Universal monsters in there, mm-hmm. uh, but but this really popularized that that character and that creature. Um, and when you start to think about it, you're like, oh yeah, it pops up a lot in different media and different films. So, you know, but, but watching this last night, I was thinking to myself, you could remake this into a pretty, pretty cool modern. Oh, film. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you, there's, there's some stuff here that you could definitely play with. Yeah. You know, think- why are they ma- remaking movies that we made five years ago? Why don't right. we go all the way back? Yeah. Well, and Universal has sat on these uh, monster properties for a long time yeah. and kind of milked it. And like, I would love to see them do some decent remakes. And I'm not talking about I Frankenstein or the like, Tom Cruise, the Van- Tom Cruise mummy and mummy. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they would just seriously take a film, like this, <laughs> and say, we're going to not just reboot the franchise. We're just going to redo the movie. And I think that that yeah. would be, 
that would be really great. It doesn't have to be a shared universe. Like that was their idea with the Tom Cruise thing is they were going to set up this whole MCU for universal creatures. And it's like, just make cool individual films that we don't yeah. need. And the thing is, if you try to set these films in our universe, then you can just do them as individual films. And if right. you want to have a crossover, then you just have a crossover because it's all in the, like this whole idea. We got to create this whole new, no, just put it in our day and, and in our time and our, our place and it'll be fine. Yeah, it's like Godzilla uh, versus Kong. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know that they were going to be a shared universe until right. they announced. And and both the you know Kong Skull Island and the Godzilla mo movies worked by themselves on right. their own. You didn't have well, to. Didn't they, make, didn't they put Predator and Alien in the same world at some yes. point? Yes. I'm sorry, Tracy, but it still happened. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say Predator versus... Uh, I can't remember which one it is. It's it's the one where they're like in the the Arctic. Yeah. And it has the 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 base that they're in like changes every 30 minutes or something like that. It has one of my favorite lines is the guy's deciphering the runes and they say, What does this say? And he goes, Sacrificial chamber. <laughs> it's just the way he says it. It's just so funny to me. They're like, sacrificial chamber. Yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> The first Alien versus Predator. Are there more than one Alien versus Predator movie? Yes, there's been several. Oh. Unfortunately, uh, it's not my jam. I don't know. The, yeah. the very first one, I'm ashamed to say, is the only Alien movie that I've ever seen in theaters. Ah, uh, so I'm I sorry. Got a chance a couple Halloweens ago to watch the original Alien in a 70 millimeter print on screen, and that was awesome. Yeah, and I know that you you enjoy those movies a lot, and I need to probably go back and revisit them alien and there. aliens is great yeah. alien three meh. and then after that they're awful yeah no Although i could i, I like I, the ridley scott movies the prometheus and the um i can't remember the name of the second one but i i liked those i, I know a lot of people i like ridley that. scott until this uh until yesterday <laughs> yeah. with the matt damon bull haircut oh my gosh I, I, I love Ridley Scott, but I'm like, and I'm sure those haircuts are historically accurate, but they look like idiots. <laughs> yeah, Jake, if you need um, to know what like a, a really good but awful mullet looks like, you could redo Matt Damon's hair for your costume. I don't. I feel like I've gotten some inspiration for the mullet thing yesterday. I was at the store and this guy pulled up in this old black uh, cheap sports car, you know, like the fake sports cars when uh -huh. you can't afford a nice one. But it was like 20 years old and he got out and had a full on mullet and it was nice. Was it glorious? And I thought, so you just came here straight from the eighties. Like somehow your car is a time machine and you're just here. That's the only <laughs> thing that makes sense because 30 years has passed since either your car or your mullet were in, in fashion. But so I am a member of a mullet group on Facebook that has like <laughs> thousands of people and I, it makes me so happy. Someone invited me. I don't know who, um, but it's called a, this mullet changed my life. And it's just people all over the nation that post pictures of them with their mullets, their babies with mullets, kids with, and their actual mullets, women with mullets. It's like, if you ever just like need something to get away from your day, yeah. this page is amazing. See, and this is why our listeners love us because what other <laughs> podcast is going to talk about a 1957 monster movie and then discuss mullets? I mean, come on. And, and I still, I have wanted to make a mullet documentary for like 10 years and I need I to could, get this done. I could see that. Um, and listen, folks, you'll, you'll be surprised to learn this. We don't plan these out in advance. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Some of people like on this out show. The show. Like and just read it. Other people have like outlines. We're like, oh, let's talk about this movie. Here we go. My my sister sent me an email earlier this week uh, because in her profession, someone uh, in her in, at her office wants to put together a podcast for their team and their group, and they gave her estimates on how much time it would take and how time consuming it, it would be, and like the prep work they have for like four hours a week. And she's like, "Does that sound right to you?" I'm like, "Uh, well, I mean, if I'm watching a four hour movie." Maybe but other than that, like, I mean, we, I don't want to I mean, make maybe it Craig, maybe Craig does that. Yeah. And Craig that's the thing. Totally so it's like, yeah. It just depends on your style of podcasting and what you want to do. And we, we, we are know we're better. We know we're better on the fly. 
Yeah, the Monday morning memory wipe definitely has a lot of prep that goes into it. Yeah, it does. And and I think that's great. And there are shows that I enjoy that really do a good job with that. That's not our style. And that's just not what, what we can and do. That's okay. But we do have to give a grade to to the creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, and then we can give a grade to mullets. Um, I guess, <laughs> it depends maybe. on the mullet. You can't just grade yeah, it. I, it can't in just generalities. Like, oh, general. Is that a yeah. word? Generalities? The, the mullet is like the genre. And then you have the specific examples inside of it. Because some people have lazy mullets and some people you know that they spend time. Yeah. But this is this is my thing about making the mullet documentary is that mullets influence your life. Like you don't see a mullet and just walk past it. You either see a mullet, like you immediately have some sort of thought or reaction. You either think that's amazing or what the crap is that person doing? Or, you know, like there you don't. You can't just walk past a mullet without having a reaction. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, people with mullets, I don't know if they understand what they're doing to the world around them. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. Right. Yeah, but they are shaping the world around them for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and they're coming back. I went to an event with like younger kids, like in their like, I would say 17 to 20s. And uh -huh. all these boys had like these different versions of like mullets now. Yeah. And I was just like, okay. And and most of them, if you said, oh, that's a nice mullet, they'd probably like, it's not a mullet. It's a whatever. I don't it's know. A, yeah. But no, it is. I don't care. <laughs> whatever the kids call it. You've days. got this in the front. You've got party <laughs> in the back. It's a mullet. All right. So, Tracy, what would you grade this movie? <laughs> I, I was surprised. I thought the cinematography was amazing. I, Val touched on it a little bit, the the shadows that they used. Um, some of it's a little silly. Like you can tell that they're swimming in not too deep of water. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, there's kelp beds off California. That's obviously where they film this, um, as well as the tank. But I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed going back and watching it. Like Jake said, it's like an hour and 15, uh, an hour and 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I'm going to so go with B plus on this one. I had a lot of fun with it. Awesome. Val? I'm going solid B. I had a lot of fun as well. Um, at first I was like, okay, we're going to watch these movies. And then I was like, let me go like get myself ready. And so I looked at some of the trailers and I was like, okay, this is super fun. Um, so if you need to get yourself psyched up for it, they do have like trailers, but not only that, like three to four minute sections of each of these old monster movies on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and and it they'll tell you who was in it. They'll tell you like what the genre was. Like it's this cool little site. I'll post, I'll post it so you cool. guys can see like kind of how they break down these um, trailers and stuff like that um, from this site on YouTube. Um, and then you sit down and watch the movie and it is, it's just a lot of fun. I think it's nice to see a movie that, because I think they weren't trying to make good movies, but I think they also knew back then what they were doing. They don't take yeah. themselves too seriously. They knew that it would be brain candy. You know, they knew they wanted to make something suspenseful, but also a good date night movie yeah. um, so that you could snuggle in to your date, you know, like that kind of movie. Mm -hmm. um, they knew they weren't going to get nominated for crap. You know what I mean? Right, so. Right. Um, so I like that. I like watching, especially after like some of the movies I've seen over the past couple of weeks, it was nice to just watch something that was just fun and I laughed and it was a good time. Um, so yeah, solid B for me. Yeah, I agree. I, I put it in, in as a B as well. Um, it was, it was just enjoyable. And I think that that's what you could hope for for many movies that you just enjoy it and have a good time for whatever reason. And this definitely fits in that category. I think it's one that, you know, if you've got, if you've got kids that you, that aren't going to necessarily be into the whole horror jo genre as it exists today because it's too scary or whatever, and you but you still want to give them a little bit of a fun thrill or something, it, this could be a movie that you could show them. Um, and uh, I think that they would still enjoy it, even if it wasn't, uh, you know, new and updated and things like that. So I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, pretty solid story. So it'd be from me. So. All right, there you go, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Next week, we've got Dracula, and we haven't decided what we're doing for our third movie yet. Yeah. And that one is going to be without Val, so we need to pick a good movie, Tracy. Val's theme. Yes. 
we can't just say Val's not going to be here. We have to say why. Val's got a well, big deal going. Well, yes, Val's Val's going to Hawaii to get married. She's getting married. Awesome. And we are so excited for you, Val. It's going to be so great. Thank you. So when you I will post some things. Yes. You come and see us on the 29th. It will be post Val's Hawaii mitt. Wedding. Follow follow Val on Instagram for all the food pictures because I'm sure the <laughs> is going to be amazing. Yes, and sure. the scenery pics too. Plus, Jake and I have seen the dress, and the dress yeah. is outstanding. And from what it we've has heard, been altered, yes. a little bit. Okay, yeah. but still, mm. Tracy just likes to point out to people that we've seen the dress because a lot of people have asked to see the dress and they have not seen it. So we are pretty lucky. We are in the inner circle. I don't, I don't want to brag, but we're kind of a big deal because we still. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure to follow us in all the places so you can get details about our event on the 29th and where, where we will be helping to raise money for the American Cancer Society um, in their fight against cancer and in Tracy's fight against the dopey challenge. So uh, <laughs> win. he's going to win spoilers. Tracy's going to win. It's going to be awesome. I, I, all I have to do is cross that finish line before the that's winning. Leaves. That's all that's I have winning. To do. Yeah. Yep. That's winning. Yep. That's what I mean. You're going to beat the dopey challenge. You, you know, it, it's going to be awesome. So, uh, but follow us in all the places. Thank you so much for all of your support. And uh, until next time, we won't see you at the movies. We don't have a song to sing Tracy. No song no, on this there, one. there wasn't really a song for this one. I don't, I don't so, know what we could do. Yeah. Just talk about not right. having a song, and I'm going to play the outro music. So here we go. There won't be. This has been a Stolen Droids Media Production.